okay? Healthcare. Oh, should I say Obamacare? To me, this has got to be one of the strongest examples. Why are so many white folks, six out of 10 white folks, voted for a politician who promised to destroy the Affordable Care Act? They have a political party who's so intent on destroying it, they don't care if it increases the deficit. If only they can, through that means, throw 28 million people off of insurance. It's insane. It's insane as deficit. It's insane in terms of health care. It's insane if you actually care about people. Six out of 10 whites voted for it. Why? Because they called it Obamacare, because they racialized it, right? Because they said, Health care, that's a government giveaway to people of color. And you cannot fight to defend health care unless you deal with racism. You can't do it. Right? And, and you did not see, you did not see Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders saying we need health care and to the extent that people are afraid of government supporting health care it's because they think this is a giveaway to people of color. Enough of that nonsense. Stop pointing your finger at other people of color. Start thinking about who holds the real power in this country. Start thinking about the rich. Fear the rich. Fear concentrated wealth. Don't fear other working people because they're a different color or a different religion or a different gender or a different sexual orientation. Right? That's got to be the conversation. Now notice, just to be clear, this is not a conversation about race with whites that starts with the idea that you're a bigot or that you're guilty or that you're responsible for centuries of racial oppression. Doesn't start there because the class left is right. That's a non-starter. We're gonna lose. If, if we say we're gonna go to the white community and talk to white community about how they ought to really feel bad and how they're responsible and how they really need to do a deep dive into their own white supremacist history, this will work with a very small fragment of whites. I mean, it does, and, and more credit to them. Right? I imagine some of the white folks listening to this or in this room are like, yeah, I've done that hard work. I've dealt with it. You are not typical. Right? The vast majority of white people are going to say, not me, I didn't do it. And you're trying to make me feel guilty actually convinces me that I need to protect myself by surrounding myself only with white people. Right? So we need a conversation that starts, and we need a race, I mean, let me put this as sharply as possible. We need a race conversation with whites that starts with self-interest. Not with guilt, not with responsibility, self-interest. We need a race conversation that says to white people, you care about your children? You want to make sure your children have a job or have a pension or have health care, live in a decent society, you deal with racism. Not to save people of color, not because you're a bad person, but because you care about your children. You want to save your children, then you got to deal with racism because the biggest threat in your life is not other people of different colors. It's concentrated wealth in the way our society has been hijacked by corporations and family dynasties. Right? It's a conversation about race, but framed in terms of self-interest. And that self-interest story is fundamentally a story about Douglas politics. Okay? Mass deportation. You guys got it now. We've practiced. We're ready. Somebody from the audience is going to rock this. Yes. OK. Hi. Yes, I'm calling on you. Yes, go ahead. Rock it. Oh, gosh. Um, I think we can frame this in a way that human rights kind of a story, the, the race left story. This is, a, this is a, a, a terrible destruction of families and fear and uh, human rights abuse. But why are the class left people going to sign on to that? Why aren't they going to say, hey, you know, you look at the popularity of Trump and his campaign, a lot of that's anti-immigrant rhetoric. We can't come out and sound pro-immigrant. In fact, you know, 
um, they just the New York Times just had an had an, an, an op ed saying. Hey, immigration was a lot of what supported Trump. Democrats need to back away from immigration reform. <coughs> That's how the class left is responding. So what can we say? I think we can say that we need immigrants to have a healthy economy. I think they're a, a foundational part of who we are as a country and how our, how our economy runs. Great. That's the, that's the class left version. So so now if you come, if, I, if I'm worried about my family, if I'm like, writing notes about, like, if I get picked up, who, am I, who are going to take my kids, right? And this is, this is what's happening. People are writing notes. Who gets my children? They're, they're scared to death. And somebody comes along and says, yeah, we really need you. Uh, you're good for the economy. It's like, OK, that's not really responsive, right? What's this story that pulls us together? I think basically acknowledging that aside from indigenous people, we're all immigrants. You know, we've all come to this country. How do you think most white people feel about that story? They're not comfortable with it. Super not comfortable, right? I mean, it's, I mean, it's like I, I, I'm I'm happy with it, you know. And I, I I cruise around with a T-shirt that says, you know, who you call a pilgrim and you know, all of that stuff. But we need a story that brings people together. Is it just starting with the idea that this is a like the frame of this mass deportation? This is actually the right trying to. Hey folks, this country just voted for a Playboy billionaire whose most famous tagline was, you're fired because he kept telling you to worry about brown people. Do you really think the biggest danger in your life is brown people? Or do you think the biggest danger in your life are, are dog whistle politicians and the corporations and the wealthy family dynasties they're serving? We all have an interest in ending mass deportation. Because mass deportation is symptomatic of a politics that teaches us to fear each other and to give government over to the very rich. And that means for communities of color, and, and I should include, it's not just Latinos, there are a lot of big African immigrant communities, big Asian immigrant communities. For communities of color, mass deportation is a terrible, crushing level of violence in our communities. And for white folks, it's how you all are giving away government to the very rich, and it's why your pensions are gone and there's no support for unions, right? We all need to end deport mass deportation because it's symptomatic of a politics that pits us against each other and hands the country over to the very rich.